Okay, so I'm going to show you an easy way to model with correct edge flow. Uh, but first, I'm just going to do a quick overview about what it is and why it's so important. So first up, what is edge flow? So it's basically allowing the loops to flow for as long as possible. So as you can see here, having four cross sections, the edges can flow through and be inserted easily. However, anything less or more than four will terminate that flow. So here with three, you can see it stops. And here with five, it also stops. And why is having good flow so important? For starters, it's good for modeling. Um, because we can insert edges and refine creases easier. Here's an example of a sharp curve. With good edge flow, I can simply select the flow and insert supporting edge loops. Without it, I'm pretty much screwed. It's also extremely important for animation and deformation. So here's an example of a mouth area. This topology here, it looks pretty clean, right? And it seems to work for the most part. However, you can see that there's artifacts, uh, especially around the corners of the mouth. Um, so if I smooth it, it shows you the same bad result. Uh, when I try and deform the mouth, the cheeks should fold. However, here, because the edge flow is shitty, it doesn't deform correctly. So the reason this happens is because although quads are good, they're still essentially tries. So one quad just consists of two tries. So it needs to connect using an edge. Maya hides these edges from us, so it doesn't influence the flow. Uh, as you can see here, one side looks okay, but the other side has a dodgy cut. You could add a bunch more divisions to try and reduce this effect, but you'll just have to add heaps and it's unnecessary when you have good flow anyway. Here's the same scenario, however this has good edge flow. So as you can see the edges flow where the creases are prominent, therefore when I deform the mesh, it pops the cheeks and creases where it should. Um, this is good because it also keeps the polys low and we get a better result. And you can see overall, it just does a better job when you smooth it as well. All right, so now I'm gonna show you an easy way to model with good edge flow. You can essentially break up edge flow into two parts. You have straights and you have curves. When they're parallel, it's easy to just bridge them together, uh, but you're gonna to get to a point where obviously you can't bridge them anymore. So you have to identify when one flow branches off into another. You can think of it like splitting a banana peel. In order to connect them while still keeping quad workflow, we're gonna use something called a pole. And a pole is basically a point of direction change where it no longer uses four edges. So here we can add a pole point and then we can keep the flow going up and we can also continue the flow going along the curve. And then we can fill the rest with quads. This method works really well on the outside of a curve. However, on the inward side, we just basically keep one point with three edges and then we can just make that a quad and basically fill in the rest of the gap and done. And once you've connected everything with quads, you can go through and easily add supporting edge loops on the areas that have that good flow. So knowing this, all you really need to do is identify where your straights and curves branch off and then connect them with poles and you're all set. All right, so I'll do a quick draw over on Shrek's pretty face. So on the mouth area, you wanna identify the creases for the correct edge flow. Then you wanna find where those edge flows branch off and add a pole. Then you wanna connect those poles to the edges. And then you can go through and just fill in the rest as quads. Once you got that, you can subdivide it to add more resolution. And I'll do an example around the eye area, just so you can see a situation that's a little bit more complex. So again, you just identify the edge flow areas. Then you add poles everywhere that flow branches off. Then connect the poles to the edge flow and fill in the rest of the quads. And you've got a good base mesh. So here's an example of where you can put this into practice on a 3D model. So I'll just position it so I can see the nose in a good spot. And in Maya, we can use the pencil tool and we can just draw the edge flow loops where we need them. And then we can identify where the poles are and then go through and just connect those edges the same way. All 
I'm also adding a few more edges to keep the shape a bit more. So here's an example of where it curves inwards. And if I connect it like this, it makes a try. So remember, we have to keep one of these vertices only having three edges, and then we can connect it up as a quad. And I'll just make sure all the edge flow is going where it should. And now once we've got all the basic edges where they are, we can actually draw quads onto this model directly. So to do that, we can select the head, then we can right click and do make live. Now we can go over to the modeling toolkit and enable quad draw. And now I can just literally draw in those vertices everywhere they need to be. And these will stick to the surface of the life mesh. And then holding shift, I can simply just make quads out of all these points. Then once I've got a good base mesh, um, I can go through and just fix up some points to get them in a better spot. And then you can basically just add as much detail as you want. So you can see I'm just adding more edge loops to get higher resolution. Then you can just hold shift and smooth these in a little bit. And there you go. Quick, easy, smooth, edge flowy snoz with really nice edge flow set up. So anyway, I hope that helped. Um, just makes modeling a little bit easier. Um, yeah!